It's good to see everybody. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Rodriguez. Excuse my back here. I'll make my comments relatively brief because we want to make sure that we leave uh, ample time for, uh, for questions. But as you know, I'll just review uh, the information that you all received, and I'll try to highlight what, what is particularly most important at this phase of this particular, now they're calling it a pandemic. The World Health Organization has deemed it as such, which means this has a global impact. It's reached the, the threshold of that. As uh, Dr. Rodriguez uh, stated, we will remain open. All of our nine colleges, our district offices, our district functioning, services, support, until otherwise noted. And I'll get back to that in just a moment. So I want to ensure that the students know that if indeed you need extra support, laboratory support, et cetera, during this time of transition, that it will be there for you. For the remainder of this week, we are moving forward as scheduled. Classes will meet as scheduled. The in-person classes, face-to-face -face classes will meet as scheduled. Your online classes will meet as scheduled. But as uh, President Rodriguez mentioned, Monday and Tuesday, we're going to have what they sometimes describe as an in-service day for our instructors, our teachers, our faculty. And we're going to, for those who are not certified in distance education methodology and modalities, we're going to have all nine colleges, two full days of trainings, if you will, from our distance education coordinators and others who are very very familiar with the Canvas shell or Zoom and the, the connected uh, process. These are modalities, ways to be able to teach online, teach virtually, teach with quality, post assignments, post documents. It's a, every course will have a Canvas shell and it's the faculty members' uh, responsibility and interest to populate that shell that provides an academic course uh, syllabus, content, materials, interaction, et cetera. What we're trying to do, as was shared, is to mitigate, slow down the potential spread of community spread. There are no cases that we are aware of at any one of our nine LA CCD colleges. Not a single one. Not a single one. We're taking precautionary measures, et cetera. If you're sick, you should stay home. The faculty has a very clear set of protocols that they are following uh, for just general health safety protection. So going back, Monday and Tuesday, classes are canceled. Classes, not the college. College is open. We expect all of our faculty to get trained, our staff to show up at their work sites to perform the duties and responsibilities that we all enjoy doing. On Wednesday, we'll begin the transition to online education. So you will hear from your professor how to log on, how to connect, how to indeed uh, you know, you know, maintain a sense of continuity. What we're doing now is, and this is, a, this is unprecedented, we're trying to balance a real legitimate public health concern, a health emergency, a public health emergency, with sustaining the academic goals and mission of LACCD and of the coursework and of the integrity, the units, the hours, the content that our faculty are expertly trained to provide. So we're balancing that. And right now, our best thinking is to use the online, virtual, remote learning modality to do that. So we will proceed with that. We are going to assess how this process is moving, how it's going, how it's working between now and April the 10th. That's the end of spring break. And before then, we will make an assessment as to whether or not this will continue for the remainder of the semester or whether we return partially or not to the former in-person face-to-face. Now, the way this disease is, is spreading, uh, it's not likely that we're going to go back to normality. But we don't know. We'll see if, if collectively we can do this and slow the spread. You might be aware that most major universities in the area, Cal State LA, UCLA, USC, Fullerton, Northridge, and I expect more today, have also moved their modality of teaching to, from in-person to online to follow the same suit. And you'll see other community colleges, Pasadena, Santa Monica, there's others that are following the same direction that we 
uh, are, have set yesterday. They're all following the same mode. It's new for faculty, for some, to teach in this modality, but our interest to the students is to sustain your health, to limit your exposure, and also to provide academic quality and continuity to, so that you can reach your educational goals. That's really, really important to us. Now, there'll be a question later as to, you know, are we, are we moving towards closure? Not at this point, but we, I want you to know that we are preparing for that. In the event we need to do that, we'll be able to, to, to go to that mode as quickly and as efficiently and as expertly as we can. It's responsible to prepare for that. I hope we never have to use it, frankly. But if we do, we will. Again, your health, your safety is, is super, and the most important thing embedded with that is trying to maintain a business continuity in the district and continuity for your educational programs and services. So I'll leave it at that uh, for now. And uh, do you want me to talk about public meetings and things like that? Or is, okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be talking so much, but. I, this is pretty, pretty important stuff. With the consultation of, of all nine college presidents, uh, Dr. Rodriguez, yesterday, day before, day before, we've been meeting every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Uh, we have restricted all travel for all of our executives so we could be on site, be available, and be present. We're working towards a recommendation to limit, suspend all unnecessary travel for everyone at LACCD. That is to limit the exposure of folks who are traveling. For non-essential work, we're discouraging it and essentially saying shouldn't be done. Uh, we have already canceled multiple events that we're saying because of what they describe as the social distancing and community gatherings and some guidance from our, our colleagues here. All events that expect to draw more than 100 people, we're either modifying, postponing to a later date, or we're canceling outright. So check locally if you're involved with one of those programs. Um, yeah, but there are many, many programs that will be modified if indeed not postponed or canceled. At this point, June 9th, our commencement. Who's going to graduate this year? Okay, it's on. It's on. Okay, so far, it's, you know, we'll be prudent, we'll be smart, but we've not made a decision. Uh, I haven't thought about what a virtual graduation looks like. Uh, <laughs> Have you, Dr. Rodriguez? Okay, so, because I know I like fist bumping and hugging, and, and I think I'm at East LA College this year for the graduation, so it's, uh, it's a, I always like coming to East uh, for that. So, because uh, all nine are the same day, and it's hard to get to all nine, uh, of course. So, but the many social gatherings that we are reducing its scope or indeed modifying or indeed postponing or canceling. We just simply have to do the responsible thing as a community uh, as a community partner to our other agencies. Uh, the last thing is about athletics. At this point, athletic programs, games, matches, proceed as programmed. Proceed as programmed uh, for the spring, uh, if you will, so that we've not made any determination on that. So maybe I'll end there, Dr. Rodriguez, and uh, thank you for your flexibility, your incredible interest and in your cooperation, uh, and your assistance as we navigate together to this unprecedented public health emergency. Thank you. So we're going to have a presentation now from the LA County Department of Health, Heidi Lopez. So I will um, show you all at the end our website. Also, Dr. Ferrer, who is our director of our department, actually has on our public health website, or actually the Facebook page, Every day at noon, she goes into the, there's a live update. Um, you'll hear like the updates on the news in the evening, but she's there, we can watch her live for about an hour. She'll give you updated numbers, information, things of that sort. So if you wanna go on Facebook, on our Public Health Facebook page, you can watch her daily. She had one yesterday. I missed the one today, but I'm expecting she'll be doing this on a consistent basis, okay? So let us begin. So, updates. Again, it is changing all the time. Here's our website. So please, 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 um, we highly recommend that you go on one of these websites, the LA County one, to get updated numbers. For instance, yesterday it was at 17, last night it was on 28, 
right? Because Pasadena announced their first case, Long Beach and ourselves. Yesterday, we did have our first death in our, in our county, but it was not an LA County resident. She was here visiting um, friends. So it's really sad to announce our first death, but again, those updates are done daily on our website. So by the end of our present, my presentation, we will discuss what is coronavirus, including novel coronavirus. We'll explain how virus is spread. We will describe the steps to prepare if COVID-19 spreads locally, and describe what you can do to protect yourself from infection. So what are our coronaviruses, right? There's not just this one, COVID-19, there's many um, coronaviruses. So as you can see, that's what the virus looks like. There are little spikes at the end of the virus that looks like a crown. Um, that's where they get the corona part of it. Not in the beginning you heard corona beer, nothing like that, okay? It's because of what the, what the virus looks like. Um, coronaviruses are not new, but COVID-19, the one that we have right now, that's new for, for humans. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, rarely this, these viruses evolve and infect humans, typically causing mild to moderate illnesses in, in people. Um, the, the illness can be from mild symptoms to very severe symptoms, hospitalizations, and death. So again, this one is new. It is now called SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 because it was discovered in 2019. So coronavirus is an animal. Sometimes animals can spread this virus to people. Recent examples, who remembers SARS? Who remembers MERS? Okay, those were also coronaviruses, okay? Um, and it, again, it caused real illnesses and it spread between people. Um, the new coronavirus is spreading from person to person. Now we have heard from like the WHO, the HWO organization that there was an issue regarding food, um, but this is not a foodborne illness. Just to let, kind of confirm that um, information, okay? Any questions so far? We're good? Okay. So symptoms, fever, cough, trouble breathing, vomiting and diarrhea. What else has these symptoms? Flu-like symptoms, what else? A cold, right? So um, again, th these are very similar to other symptoms and other viruses that are around right now. Some people may not even show any kind of symptoms. They're asymptomatic. Um, signs can, begun, can begin two to 14 days after exposure. So you can be, be exposed, and then two weeks later, you start to develop the symptoms. So it's very important that you know how your body is, that you know what the symptoms are. Again, fever, cough, trouble breathing, vomiting, and diarrhea. How do they spread? So it spreads through close personal contact. That's what social, distance, social distancing is. It's like at least six feet from somebody if possible, arm's length from somebody. Um, again, we recommend, you know, we do the fist pump and the elbow pump. Um, again, coughing or sneezing. So when you sneeze or you cough, you're projecting the virus. Your mucus is projecting, okay? Not super far, but you are like when you sneeze, you go, hachoo! So what's, re what's recommended? What should we do when we cough and sneeze? Do the dab, right? Do the dab. If you use a tissue, toss your tissue immediately and wash your hands, okay? So investigations are ongoing to understand how easily this current novel coronavirus is spreading. Um, when this was created, this presentation, we had no community um, passing, right? As of yesterday, we have possibly how many? Two. So like I said, Things are constantly changing. So please, please, please go on our website, watch Dr. Ferrer on Facebook or on one of our other social media po um, posts to get the most updated um, information. Or you also go on the CDC. That's also a wonderful website. Um, okay, so we have heard 
about discrimination against and violence due to fears around COVID-19 among certain ethnic groups. Our Asian and Asian American sisters and brothers are receiving some kind of, you know, reluctancy to um, whatever it may be. We want to say it's not just one specific ethnic group that has the COVID-19, right? We've seen a variety of ethnic groups, a variety of areas where it's being spread, so it's not just them. Um, we do not condone any discrimination or violence due to fears, and we encourage residents to speak up in kindness for one another, okay? You see it, what does Ellen say? Be kind. Let's do that for everybody else too, right? Be kind to one another. Um, People wear protect, protective masks for many reasons and should not be harassed or targeted because of that. Okay? What's next? Ah, focus on the facts. Again, infectious diseases are not connected to any specific race or ethnic group, so avoid assuming someone has a disease based on the way they look or their family or origin. So how is it treated? There is no specific treatment for the illness. When you have a cold, what do you do? Rest, what else? Water, you can take Tylenol for the fever, right? Is there a vaccine for the cold? No. Um, so many symptoms can be treated. Treatment, treatment will be based on the patient's condition or symptoms. Again, no vaccine for coronavirus, including this one, SARS-CoV-2. Ah, yes, ma'am. I know that you said you need to stay home, but there's a point that they need to go to the hospital for a sample. So if you have symptoms, it is recommended you call your, your doctor, okay? Let them know what your symptoms are. Let them assess if you need to go in because you don't want to just show up. Let's say you do have it. You don't want to just show up and then you, can, you contaminate everybody else around you. Um, if you get severely, ear and you call, severely ill and you call 911, tell EMS your symptoms. Let them know so that they can be prepared to pick you up, okay? If you want to go to ER, how are you going to call them first? Or if you have, if you have a mask, to wear a mask when you get to the ER. Okay, but again, call your, prim your primary provider first, 911, tell the EMS what your symptoms are so they can be prepared as well. Okay. Great question. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, okay. to that. So I'm Dr. Tech, I'm the medical director of VIA Care. We have a uh, student health clinic here. Uh, that's a very good question, very common. Um, I want to emphasize that if you have mild, like cold or flu-like symptoms, like cough, uh, you know, fever, shortness uh, of breath, if it's mild, just, you know, if you're sick, just stay home. But call us if you have questions. We have a call center that will triage you. If you have more severe symptoms like uh, high fever, body ache, and you need to see a provider, then yes, we encourage you to come to the clinic first. Don't go straight to the ER because the ER is already uh, inundated. You know, uh, you know, yeah, inundated. In in inundated yeah. with patients with just cold and flu-like symptoms. So call your... Um, your doctor's office first or your community health center will triage you, come to see, see us first. Don't immediately go to the ER or call 911 just because you think you may have the coronavirus. It's really important that we stay calm mm -hmm. uh, and, and fight this virus. Uh, you know, when the COVID-19 was published as a global emergency threat, it was really for the underdeveloped countries who have weaker health system. United States has like probably the best doctors in the world, medical facilities to contain the virus. So it's very important that we stay calm and follow, uh, you know, the healthcare authorities such as uh, Los Angeles County Department of Public Health, uh, the California Department of Public Health, mm -hmm. and uh, CDC, and all the way to the WHO. So don't get a lot of misinformation from the internet because some viral veto. That's really important. That there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of fear mongering in the media. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you just stay cool and just follow the precautions that the health authorities have uh, educated you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So there are, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, 
do you have? Uh, yeah, so, um, so COVID-19 can cause what we call severe acute respiratory um, syndrome. Uh, rarely you get severe complications such as pneumonia, oh, yeah. which you can get an x-ray for. That's going to be determined by your uh, nurse practitioner or your physician assistant or even doctors. They can evaluate you, they do clinically. The clinical symptoms are more important than just getting an x-ray or just unnecessary radiation. So we can listen to you, making sure your lungs are okay, look at your symptoms, rather than rushing to just to get a chest x-ray. Uh, again, if you have more severe symptoms, like ongoing cough for maybe a week or two, then you may want to see a healthcare professional. But I wouldn't recommend getting an x-ray just, be just because, because you want to rule out pneumonia. As far as testing, so the primary provider will decide if you will get tested or not. Not everybody will, be get, will get tested. Um, so if your primary provider, they have a criteria for the testing, if you meet the criteria, then they will then test you. As far as public health department, currently we're not going out and testing everybody. Um, so we will just test those that the primary provider will suggest that we test or they will test you as well. Does that answer your question? Okay. So again, um, like we said earlier, yes sir. So they can decide to do the test. If they don't have the kit, then they would contact us. I do not know. I do not know how many tests we have. Dr. Ferrer was asked that question yesterday, and she did not have the number of tests that we received. Um, per Dr. Ferrer yesterday, we did receive some from CDC in the state, um, so, but I don't have that particular okay. number. So, can I answer you? So nationally, I think we only tested 50,000 people. Okay, so uh, when you go to your regular doctor, you request from like Quest or LabCorp, they have containers to diagnose the test, but they don't have their actual, uh, you know, equipment to look at the geno like the genome of the virus and to accurately uh, diagnose the, uh, the virus. So, so what we go through at the uh, Via Care Community Health Center is that we triage you based on your symptoms, and then we coordinate uh, your care with the health department closely whether you, you need the, the test or not. If you fit all the criteria, let's say you have a uh, risk factor, like epidemiologic risk factors, such as if you travel to a certain part of China, not all regions of China are at high risk. It's only in Wuhan and Hubei province. That's the main area in some uh, northern Italy and also South Korea, and Japan, Iran. and Iran. So, yeah, I think she mentioned try not to discriminate people just they came, because they're from China. Uh, or inter I think you have international students here from China. They're not, uh, they're, they're, they live in the areas that are not being affected by the coronavirus. It's like saying uh, the, uh, uh, they live in Washington State. And there's a, an outbreak, some, uh, you know, in that Washington State. But uh, let's say they, there's an outbreak in uh, Hubei Province, right? And they live in a different province, like living in a different state. And you're trying to discriminate them based on, you know, the country and not the difference. That's not right, right? You know, you know what I mean? So as far as right, the, right. the testing component, the right, testing we don't, I don't have the numbers to be honest with you as far as how many do we have. I know that our LA County Public Health Lab can do the testing, so we can run our own testing. According to Dr. Freer, yesterday we can do 70 tests a day, um, but I don't know what we have at this time on hand. Um, update also is that our public health nurses throughout the county, if there's a, suspect, a suspected case or a contact to a case, we will follow them. So we already kind of know who, who to look out for. Um, and if our nurses think that they need to get tested, then we can ask them to get tested. Yeah. Does that answer your question? OK. Outbreak. They would need to develop the symptoms, but the primary provider, that's why it's important that you call your doctor and tell them you have the symptoms so they can put on the mask, they can put on the face shield, they can put on the protective gear to prevent them from getting the virus. So, but if they do develop the, some symptoms, then yes, they will get tested definitely. Not that, I, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, good question. That, not that I'm aware of, yeah. So our nurses are trained to do the swab in the mouth and the swab, like 
um, and the nose to get like the mucus in the cells to see if it's if we have it. Just, just because we don't have the, the, the diagnostic test, so at the clinic that we're at, we do, like she said, do an oral pharyngeal swab, an oral nasal, uh, nasal swab. We have the container to transport the virus to the, uh, the public health laboratory. That's where they're going to run the more diagnostic tests. Right now, we don't have a lot of uh, diagnostic tests or or even vaccine for it. They're testing them out. Kaiser just came out with something today to start testing on humans, but I'm not sure how effective it will be. So we just have to wait and hear it day by day from mm -hmm. the uh, healthcare authorities. Mm -hmm. And again, things, but to do that, you do, you do do two tests, the, the nasal and the oral one. There's another question next to you. Oh, she's okay? Okay. Yes, ma'am, and then I'll go to you, sir. So if you are actually in contact with somebody who actually has the virus, right, then hopefully that person named you as a contact, the nurse will contact you. But if you don't know as far as like nobody contacts you, you can self-quarantine for 14 days. Well, if it's a classmate, that would be up to how the, the school would run it. But if you think that you have been exposed, you should self-quarantine for 14 days which means stay in your room. But if, again, if you are an actual contact to an actual case and you are named as a contact, you will have somebody contacting you to talk with you, educate you, and then also follow you for 14 days. But if you, so it's, again, kind of calm the fears. If somebody's coughing or sneezing next to you, again, it's flu season, it's cold season, it's allergy season, right? So don't just assume that they may have had it. Kind of, they have, would have to have other symptoms and have to have either traveled to one of the high affected areas or and have taken care of somebody who actually has the disease or has the virus. Does that answer your question? Kind of. Again, prevention is the best thing. Hand washing, soap and water for how long? What's the best way to count in 20 seconds? Happy birthday. I do it all the time with the kids at the schools. Do it. Sing happy birthday to yourself. But again, the best thing for you is prevention. And then if you think you may be exposed, it's just to stay home um, if possible. Yeah. Just FYI, you can't get COVID-19 from the air, okay? It's not in the air. It's when people cough and, draw, and, and sneeze and those droplets hit a surface. What do we do? We go and touch the surface, and then we put our hands in our mouth, in our eyes, and that's how it gets into our body. So that's why hand washing is so important, wiping down surfaces, okay? So just because you're in the same room as somebody who, was, uh, who has COVID-19 doesn't mean you're going to get it. Measles is more infectious because it's in the air. So just be aware of that, okay? Wash your hands. Hand sanitizers are so important. Okay. Do you have? I haven't heard about papers. I heard more about like this kind of surfaces, things of that sort. Have you heard about papers? I haven't heard about paper. But I think to answer your question is you're worried about how long does the virus live or stay alive. We don't know, okay? And that's what they're doing in the investigation of the virus. They don't know how long it lasts um, on surfaces. So, you know, just be cautious. You know, when you are grading papers, don't touch your, ha your hand. Don't touch your face right after. I would, as a, if I was a teacher, I would go wash my hands right away. Okay, avoiding your face is the best thing you can do right now. Okay, I know it's hard, right? Uh, you also have to look at the risk factors. If your students are not from, like, uh, like you know, don't have risk factors for COVID-19, haven't traveled to Wuhan, uh, China, Hubei province, North, like Italy, all those things, do they have risk factors and do they have active symptoms like cough, uh, shortness of breath, fever? And then I think you would uh, take uh, higher precautions, but if they don't have all those symptoms, 
I just use hand sanitizer and disinfect the area whenever you can, practice good hygiene. That really will go a long way in preventing a spread of not just uh, in, uh, COVID-19, but just infection in, in general. Viruses in general. Yeah, try yeah. not to touch your face, but you know. Okay, so again, um, frequently touching to, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, I'm sorry, I'm, I skipped you. So I know that, that the president last night had mentioned, did you all hear the president last night? So he had made an announcement to work with health insurances and things of that sort. Um, the public health department, you don't need insurance to go there. So if you need to go to like Roy Ball Health Center, things of that sort, um, if you need to go to like the Whittier Health Center where we're located, you will not be asked for insurance yeah. at Roy Ball. I mean, sorry, at Whittier Health Center for sure. Okay, so, um, and at <clears throat> Whittier Health Center, we will, if we had a test, we could test people for free there. So I'm sure that in the future, um, that would be one possibility. And I think uh, Governor uh, Gavin Newsom also said that all those fees could, uh, should be waived. So you shouldn't be scared of like uh, getting tested or paid, uh, uh, you know, medical co-pays or whatever deductible uh, just because you want to get tested. for. Uh, we have a clinic on campus, so if you have any questions, give us a call first or you can just drop by. Um, we're we're going to be really happy to answer your questions. Oh, and, 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 no there's no, and there's no cost, yes. Yeah. So again, um, the public health centers, we have one in Whittier. If we do need a test there, it will be for free. Again, what we said earlier, as far as the campus um, health center, we'll be able to do testing or treatment or whatever is needed for free. Mm -hmm. Can we hold the questions until the end? Sure. So I'm going to run really quick through this, and then we'll do all the questions at the end, because we're kind of running out of time, I believe. Okay. So. Let me go through this really quick. Again, um, in 2019 is when we decided, when we first found it in um, Wuhan, Hubei province of China. Um, cases continue to increase and more are being identified in other countries. Um, there is now evidence of community spread in the US and possibly in LA County. We are preparing for a possibility of community spread here in LA County and encourage you to do the same. What does that mean? Just get your emergency kits ready. If we had an earthquake or if you have to be in the house, you need an emergency kit, right? You need food, you need water. To be honest, you may not need 20 packs of toilet paper, but I mean, you just get prepared for you and your family, whatever that may be. You just need to do that for your family for any kind of emergency, okay? Um, again, to please go on our website to keep informed. Uh, so what are we doing? We are partnering with CDC and the California Department of Public Health. We are actually communicating with Customs and Border Patrol um, at the LAX airport. So we are, LAX is, is in LA County, so we are working with them. Uh, we are working with hospitals and other healthcare agencies. We have gone out to all the nursing homes in the county. We have gone out to all the homeless shelters in the county to give them guidelines and how to prepare for them as well. Nursing homes no longer will have visitors. Um, so if you have a family member in a nursing home, it's likelihood you will not be able to go see them, okay? Um, so we are, like I said earlier, we are following people who have been identified, um, who have been infected, or who have been exposed to an affected person. And again, we are educating like I am today, coming to speaking with you guys. All right. So. Practice healthy daily habits. Wash your hands. Sing happy birthday for 20 seconds when you wash your hands with soap and water. Okay, so when you're done washing your hands, how do you turn off the faucet? Paper towel. If you open the, the faucet with a dirty hand, you wash your hands, you turn off the faucet with your hand, your hands are dirty again, right? Okay, so... Wash your hands, soap and water, use a paper towel to turn off the faucet. Basic hand hygiene. Should I have to say this, but after going to the restroom, please wash your hands. Before eating, wash your hands. Blowing your nose, coughing, sneezing, wash your hands. Um, you can use um, hand sanitizers. Um, again, vo avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Limit close contact, like kissing and sharing cups, utensils, not only for coronavirus, but if you share a utensil, you share a cup, and that person has a cold, will you get the cold? 
Highly likely. So yes. Um, oh, best thing, get your flu vaccine. Flu is still very prominent now, and more people die from the flu than COVID-19. So if you really want to protect yourself as a public health professional, I have to say, get your flu vaccine. Okay? And we offer that for free. So you don't have to pay for that. Pharmacies too, you can get it too. Um, if, you are, if you have to travel, last night the president banned all travel to Europe except for the UK, but if you have to travel, go on the CDC website for updates. Let's see, so travel to affected countries. Following the instructions given to you by the CDC, Customs and Border Patrol, and your local health, public health department, if you are in China or other affected countries within the last past 14 days and feel sick with a fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, you should contact your medical provider. Again, call them before you go, um, and then while you're sick, avoid going out. Stay home. So what is the federal government doing um, regarding travelers from China? We're restricting all foreign nationals who have traveled or been in mainland China and Iran the last 14 days from entering the U.S. Last night, that changed. It was updated. So again, things are constantly changing. Requiring all U.S. citizens and their close family members returning from mainland China to enter through one of 11 airports in the U.S., including LAX, where they will be screened by U.S. Customs and Border Patrol agents. And if travelers are showing signs of respiratory distress or illness, they will be sent for additional testing to a healthcare facility. So don't spread. Again, all we can say is if you're sick, stay home. If you have a child who is sick, have them stay home. Okay? Cover your mouth and nose how? With the tissue and the dab. Just do the dab. Um, put the tissue in the trash. And again, wash your hands. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces. So what to do if you're sick? Most people will have mild symptoms and should stay home until 24 hours after fever. Alicia, was that changed? Now it's 72 hours. So like I said, things are constantly changing. So if you have mild symptoms, um, you should stay home for at least 72 hours after your fever has subsided. Okay. Call your doctor early if you are elderly. So if you have a family member who's elderly, if you or somebody you know is pregnant, or if you have a compromised immune system or have underlying medical problems, okay? If you have difficulty breathing or keeping fluids down, go to the emergency room or call 911. And when you call 911, you tell them what? Your symptoms, exactly. So be prepared for closures. So if a widespread community transmission of COVID-19 may require closure of schools and businesses, right before this started, this town hall, um, LAUSD was on the radio with LACO and other ones are saying they're not closing any LAUSD schools yet. Okay, there's no closure of schools right now. But be prepared. If you have a child at, in school, be prepared. What will you do if the school gets closed? Okay, will you have child care? Will you, whatever, just be, make a plan now. Know what you will do if the following establishments are closed. Again, school, daycare, your work, college, or university. So for colleges, have an emergency communication plan, which they're doing right now. All employees who stay home if someone in the house is sick or school closures have occurred. Don't require a health care provider's note for return to school or work. Isolate and quarantine students and close contacts who live on campus. Do you all have, do you all have um, dormitories? No, okay, so you guys are cool there. Um, distance learning, was they're already doing that as well. School or childcare, so if you have any children or versus sisters who are in school or in childcare, um, you need to make sure that you are signed up for any kind of um, emails they may send you. What are the childcare schools plans if they have to um, dismiss early or cancel school and then what happens if there is no school? How will your child continue to learn? So have a plan, know what their plan is. If you take, for parents, many of you may be parents, or you may take care of other family members. Um, how will other family members be cared for if they become ill or if you become ill? Have that plan. 
Work. Find out about the leave policies, including if you need to have a doctor's note. Ask about options to work from home. So again, be aware of fraudulent products. How many of you have heard about medication or stuff like that that will cure it or prevent it? Stuff like that, right? So no FDA-approved vaccines or drugs to prevent or treat novel coronavirus. No dairy supplements can prevent or cure it. Claims to do so are false. Weather, cold, hot, has nothing to do with the virus, okay? If you see companies or products that are claiming, are doing these claims, report them to the FTC or the FDA, okay? So, again, let's, let's get the facts. Avoid blaming anybody or assuming someone has a disease because of where they look or their family origin. Infectious diseases are not connected to any specific race or ethnic group. Speak up in kindness. When you hear false information or rumors or negative stereotypes, stick up for one another, okay? All right, so is information changing constantly? Yes. So please go on our website um, on a daily basis. You can go on the CDC website as well. And any other, you can also call 211. Is that it? Again, there's more places to go. Our Facebook page, Dr. Ferrer is on Facebook at 12 yesterday, I believe today as well. You can maybe watch her tomorrow. So, what have we done today so far? Let's go back. All right. So, so far today we've done, describe what coronavirus is. Remember, it's a virus with little, like, crown-looking things is where it got the name from. Um, we explained how it spreads, right? Sneezing, coughing, touching, things like that. We, just, we describe steps to prepare if it spreads locally and how to protect yourself, right? How do you protect yourself? What's the one thing you do to protect yourself? Wash your hands. Okay. And I'm done. Let me go ahead and get the question. Uh. I'd like to save the questions. We need to get to our college information. Uh, so if you bear with us, we'll have Q&A at the end. So I'd like to get to our VPs who are going to update you on what's happening here on the campus. So I'm going to start with Ruben. Thank you, President Rodriguez. Uh, so students and faculty, you should have received a number of emails in the last day or so. Students especially, uh, emails uh, likely may still be going out to you. It takes a bit of time to send emails out to about 70,000 people. But uh, as has been mentioned already, okay, classes continue as normal up to including Saturday. Monday and Tuesday of next week, uh, there will be no instruction. And I think as our chancellor has mentioned, this is truly an in-service day. It's a day for our faculty to come in and uh, get trained in remote learning. Uh, those trainings will occur from faculty on this campus from 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. Uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, uh, folks from our distance education office, uh, folks, um, actually a lot of our faculty uh, who are experts in both Zoom and Canvas are gonna be on site to work with faculty all day long, uh, Monday and Tuesday. With that said, uh, if you're an adjunct faculty who does not live in this area, you will be able to do these trainings at the other eight colleges as well. Uh, just be on the lookout for the particular schedules. I believe we have the longest schedule here in the district right now. On Wednesday, again, um, the majority of classes uh, will transition to remote learning. Okay, uh, so you will be hearing from your instructor uh, and you will likely get an email either from my office or the president's office detailing which courses will be uh, transitioning to remote learning and which will not. I'm going to kind of pre-anticipate that question of, you know, which will and which won't. Uh, the district uh, vice presidents of instruction are all going to meet at 2 p.m. today uh, to go through every single course and make decisions about sort of what will go on remote learning and what will not. And really, the, the factor for that is going to be, is there necessary uh, in-person uh, things that have to occur in the course. So potentially, potentially, and I will not say for sure yet, uh, some lab courses, uh, some career technical education courses, uh, potentially some performance courses. But the official decision on that has not been made yet, and it won't be made until likely 
this evening. I suspect that meeting will take several hours to go through. Okay. Once decisions are made, though, uh, the, the actual courses themselves, those will go out to everyone. We'll post it on our website, and uh, we'll be asking instructors to reach out to their students as well. Now, we, we've received a lot of questions about if my class goes to remote learning and I don't have a computer or I don't have access to Wi-Fi, what do I do? Uh, we're going to have a number of places uh, open on this campus, uh, which are detailed in the email that's going out to students, uh, including our writing center, our math lab, our learning center, uh, half of the fourth floor of E7. Again, signage will go up all over campus where students can come in and use a computer for remote learning. Okay, so those will be open from 8 until 10 p.m. Uh, Monday through Thursday, there will be some hours on Friday, and uh, we'll also be utilizing the library as well, which has uh, slightly longer hours. Now, one thing that I want to ask of students, uh, because of capacity restrictions, is again, the be kind, be patient. Uh, I'm going to impose a 100 person limit in a lot of locations, and it may be the case that we will need to walk you to another location. And again, we would just ask your patience if you get to a location and uh, we've reached capacity. Okay, uh, so again, be kind and be patient. Uh, it's just, uh, this is gonna be difficult for everyone, but we will do our best to, to make sure that you're served. Um, for instructors, uh, I know sir, there's some questions about instructors who want to do remote learning, uh, what's called synchronous. Essentially, that would be live, where the instructor is lecturing live during the normal class time. Uh, we have purchased uh, more than 100 webcams, uh, which will be available to, uh, for checkout to instructors uh, beginning Monday. And uh, those webcams can be used in department computers, they can be used in uh, the professional development uh, area, for example. Uh, they could potentially be taken home as well. We're just going to ask that again, uh, if we find that uh, there's a huge um, demand for that, we're going to have to prioritize putting them in labs here so for instructors to come in. Uh, we cannot emphasize enough that currently the campus is open. It is remaining open. Uh, normal services, uh, tutoring will still be available, again, with a bit of social distancing, though. Okay, so you may be used to closer tutoring sessions. Uh, we'll just take pains to, to kind of spread that out a bit. In the centers where uh, students will be uh, coming in to do online or remote learning, uh, we're working with our admin services folks to uh, essentially divert resources away from classrooms that are not going to be used now uh, to have frequent cleaning schedules in there. So for example, since we're going to be using the writing center for students to come in to do remote learning, uh, we're expecting that the custodians will be coming uh, in hourly, if not a little bit more, uh, to wipe down um, various surfaces and to you know, pass out things and uh, sanitize. Um, overall, uh, again, uh, it, it has been a very difficult time, and I, I want to thank actually our faculty and staff uh, and students who have come together to, to, to really ensure that quality instruction could still occur as we move forward. Uh, so as a quick recap, again, tomorrow we will know which courses will go to remote learning and which will not. Uh, and again, we will have spaces available on campus for students uh, to come and do remote learning, 8 to 10 p.m. Okay, uh, if the class is running, we will have a space for you to come and, and do that. Uh, the capacity for that, by the way, is, is more than about 200 at any given moment. Oh, uh, one more thing, when it comes to the uh, coming to the labs to use the computers, uh, we're going to be spacing folks out every other computer, okay? So that will get you an arm's distance uh, from folks. And again, be kind, you know, don't uh, just kind of come up to a computer and assume it's there. We just ask that you be kind to the staff and faculty who are there. Uh, they're spacing you out for a reason. So th that is currently where we're at. All this information I've shared plus more uh, is going to be posted to our website. Your faculty already know. Uh, and uh, again, we are going to keep continuing and updating as needed. As has been stressed many times, uh, the situation is constantly evolving. So check your email frequently. Sign up for the emergency notification system. I believe a handout was given to you when you came in. Uh, and uh, be look on the lookout for emails from your instructors uh, because they'll be coming uh, back to you frequently. Do you want me to take questions now? Okay. Sorry, I'm <clears throat> a little wet from the rain. Um, 
so I just wanted, first of all, to have our administrators and staff stand up. I want to have them stand up because these are the people that will be doing the front line. So all the administrators, come on. We have, I'm really proud of our team. This is both academic and student support and administrators. Okay. They have been uh, going into emergency meetings. They have been taking calls. Uh, we had a meeting last night with the district uh, till about 8.30. Uh, so they're, they're really concerned just as you are. But we're here, the student services are going to be open. It may be different than how we deliver services though. So I just want to bring up a couple of things. One is that how we're moving in this accelerated pace is actually probably an opportunity from this threat and challenge, is that we were doing this anyway, so we have to thank that our crew here has been working on Conix Ed. We have Paulina Palomino, Laura uh, Cantu, Miguel, all of them, and Vanessa, all been working on getting all of our units on board before this happened. So how we're gonna go in the future is this is the way we may be delivering some of our services. It's actually making us move faster and even quicker instead of it being phased in, well, okay, it's gonna take us six months or a year for this. Many of our forms will be put online for you to access more easily. Uh, so our, our services are gonna be open, as Ruben mentioned and as the president mentioned. Uh, but the counseling team are, is gonna go also into intensive, uh, I was gonna say therapy because I get me back to mental health, but intensive training, again, they already have uh, quite a few counselors who are trained on uh, virtual uh, live chat, virtual counseling. We're just gonna be bringing all of our counselors on board, especially with this, uh, also with the special populations as well. Um, in terms of financial aid, I know we're, we're still going to operate. We have packagers that don't, greet, uh, don't meet with the students, and they will still be working here to ensure that your financial aid uh, continues on as usual. So whatever you have with the financial aid that you still do, don't delay. You know, the, the, the deadline for the Cal Grant has passed, but there's still other deadlines that you need to meet. So we're still here to support you, assist you. Uh, we have the lab in financial aid. We'll also be open to help students because all these labs that are being open, and we understand, you brought up a good point about is there, for people who don't have light, um, uh, medical insurance, and we have to think that, even myself, I can't pick up the phone and call my doctor. I, you know, you go to the Kaiser, you gotta go through a, a, a protocol, right? And also, students who don't have insurance, students who don't have technology, that's why we're gonna be open for you. So we take advantage of utilizing those labs and take advantage of getting trained because that's going to be the wave of the future. And if, you're, if there's questions and concerns you have, we've asked our ASU, let's hear for ASU, Associated Students, we've asked our, yes, our ASU, um, we, they, are, they went around uh, asking questions or giving cards out. So those questions are going to be uh, collected. We're going to compile them, put into a frequently asked a FAQ on our website. We're also going to be sending out another notice uh, telling you specifically if there's any changes in any of our offices. Admissions will be open. You know, they're also will be looking at many of their forms will be put online. They're working as fast as, as possible. Half of them um, ready are being uh, reviewed. And so we hope to get that to you as well as along that notice. Uh, so the other thing I just want to say is uh, I got tired yesterday hearing people telling me, 26 people died over here in Washington, two people. It's, it it's really gets depressing. We don't need that for our own mental health. So let's not continue to pass that along. Let's stop that and, and say, you know, I had to tell someone, I don't want to really hear that right now. I'm busy. I don't want to see, and they're showing me the phone. I said, I don't have time for that. And it doesn't help our cause here. Our cause is to help each other. And what you said jokingly about the Corona, Corona beer lost already $2 million so far, $2 million because people think that Corona beer contribute to the virus. That's true. It's true. It's on the website. So be, let's be careful because we also are getting false alarms and we're taking energy from our people to, uh, that are here going off into a different direction. We don't need to do that. You all are going to be the champions because you're here. You're concerned. You're all going to be helping us control that because it spreads like wildfire, just like a, a, a telephone line does, right? Just let's be careful about that. It doesn't help you also for your own mental health. Talking about mental health, um, thank you for Via Care. They're our new provider. Let's hear it for Via Care. I want to acknowledge them. I talked to the uh, executive director, Deborah Villar. She's going to be here later on at 3 o'clock to meet with Sonia and the team. And uh, Cecilia, I want to thank your, your whole team with Sonia and the Health Center for doing what you're doing. It's always just being, uh, you know, these guys could be off, but they're here. They could, you know, we, we get a lot of calls, call-ins, but 
we haven't gone so much in our student support services, so kudos to, and also our academic affairs and, well, everybody down the line. So, yes. Yeah, April 3rd, is registration is going on the same. Thank you, good question. We also have other questions from the field, and I'm going to let first uh, admin services talk, and then we do want to uh, answer some of the questions on our uh, cards. Is that okay? So let's first listen to admin services. But on, on the another note, um, someone had a question about tra your transfer. Many of you received the, right, you had the questions about the transfer. They're going to be open. And the, Dr. Cantu, where are you at? There she is. So she's making sure her team, we're leading that, that effort to follow up with you, go into those areas. Um, we're just going to be very careful about congregating a lot of people like we're doing today. Uh, so, but it's necessary today. Uh, make sure before you, after uh, you finish today, go wash your hands. Okay. Oh, wash your hands. No, just kidding. Like this. So this is our new handshake. No, oh, she's out of it. Come on. <laughs> Thank you, VP Benavides. Hopefully, you will all um, leave here with a sense of calmness, uh, being able to get direct information from our LA County Public Health Office, as well as our chancellor, our president, and our complete executive staff. As you can see from all of the messages that we have all rendered today, there are plans, there are people who are executing those plans. And it is really for the complete safety of our students, faculty, and staff. So please be comforted in knowing that those plans are being made. We are expecting all of you to remain flexible and nimble. We will get the, that information out as soon as possible. From the administrative services aspect, I would like to mention to all of you, we've heard that there's links for the LA County Public Health in those web locations, as well as our district office. We have a link to the district office updates for, um, from the ELAC website. So our elag.edu website has the link directly to our district office. On that main web page, there is a button for updated news. That news is specific to ELAC. There will be various messages so that you know where different things are on campus, hand sanitizing stations with buildings. Um, there's also uh, alerts and emails um, that will be posted, giving information to faculty as well as students. As mentioned by my colleague, we do have a uh, sheet there on the sign-in table. It is for the mass notification system. We will be notifying all of our campus community through various means. Um, Typically, it would be through your district or college issued email address. It's my understanding sometimes that might not be your primary mode of getting information, but we have the capacity to send information through our Facebook page. And if you register, you could provide your cell phone number and or a personal email so that you can get a text alert when and in fact, we deploy that system. So just giving you all the options that are available. Uh, let's see, for administrative services, my responsibility is the facilities aspect of our campus. As you are aware, earlier this week, we have deployed multiple hand sanitizing stations. Please know that it took our facilities team to actually build those stands. And I'm, I'm giving you that information so that you're aware that our entire region has been depleted of all of these mechanisms and measures that all agencies, all districts are now um, fighting for. And we are just trying to keep our inventory levels up uh, coming into this meeting, I was also notified that there is um, issues within our restrooms where toilet paper and some of the essential uh, aspects that we have been uh, noted today about washing our hands, soap, all of those elements and items are now running out of stock. But 
again, don't lose heart. We're working on it, trying to see what products that we can secure, uh, various uh, means of machines that we were able to secure to do some sanitization of rooms as we move forward. Thank you to the district office. They have committed, they have committed to providing additional resources to all of the colleges so that as we continue to purchase uh, items necessary to keep moving forward, we won't have to worry about the cost. It will be provided. The other thing, um, as our VP of Academic Affairs mentioned, once we move into Wednesday in which we will open labs again for students to be able to receive online instruction, we will have staff posted and available to assist, wipe down, keep those areas clean and sanitized. That will be our primary, our primary focus where we can concentrate and allocate our resources in those specific areas. Um, so other than that, that's primarily what I wanted, my message for all of you, what we're doing behind the scenes. Go to the website, get that information, it will be updated daily, and uh, to give you some assurance, we are working very diligently. So thank you again for your patience.